Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number seven, part two from the October 2022 Pure Mathematics P4 paper. And this is a question about integration um, by uh, parts. And this is one of those special types of integration where um, you have to basically, um, you know, you'll see when you do integration by parts here, neither of these parts actually break down to zero nor to something simpler that can be integrated in itself. And we have a special technique of dealing with this kind of integral, all right, which I'm going to show you. So it says, show that the integral of 3e e to the power of x times cosine of 2x with respect to x is given or gives us p e to the power of x sine 2x plus q e to the power of x cosine 2x plus c, where p and q are constants to be found and c is an arbitrary constant. Okay, so we need to find what the values of p and q, it doesn't say they're integers or anything, so they could be fractions, it doesn't it just say con constants to be found. Now, here we're going to use integration by parts. Why do I know we're going to use integration by parts? Because we have 3, 3 times e to the power of x times cosine of 2x. So either we have a function inside a function like this. You have 3 e to the power of x. So inside this function e to the power of x is, is basically 1x. If you differentiate 1x, you get a constant. Well, this is multiplied by cosine of 2x. So it's not multiplied by the difference of what's inside the function. So we have to, we cannot use, uh, you know, we cannot say it's a function within a function or function um, within a function multiplied by the differential of that function inside it. Right, it's not of the form f of x, f dash of x times g of f of x. It's not of that form, right? And if we look at this and we think of this being the main function, cosine of something, if we think of this being the main function, all right, you have the cosine of 2x. So inside the function is 2x. If you differentiate 2x, you get 2. Well, the cosine of 2x is being multiplied by 3e e to the power of x. It's not being multiplied by a constant. It's being multiplied by e to the power of something. So therefore, this is not a function uh, where of this form either. Okay. So for example, if we had, for example, 3e e to the power of cosine 2, or sorry, sine 2x, of sine 2x times cosine of 2x, then it would be of the right form because this is the differential of what's inside this function here. Or if it was in the form of 3e e to the power of x times the cosine of, um, you know, e to the power of x even, right? As long as if you differentiate what's inside this function, you're going to get something e to the power of x. So this is a function inside a function where the differential of what's what's inside the function, what's multiplying is of that form. But in this case, we don't have that. We don't have that at all. So we have a, a product of two separate functions. So that's where we have to use the um, integration by parts. Integration by parts. Okay, so we have no choice but to use it. Now, I'm going to use a new method, which, um, you know, no, it's not a new method, an alternative way of laying out integration by parts. It's actually the same exactly as integration by parts. So what I'm going to do now is 100% acceptable in the exam. And you'll mention, you'll notice in the mark schemes, it mentions this method as, you know, telling the examiners to look out for this way of setting out the work because it's acceptable. As we can see here, it says, note, you may see different ways of presenting the application of parts, e.g. DI method. Okay, so this is something from the mark scheme of the January 2023 paper. Okay, so it's very important for us to realize that we can use this method. There's some students say, oh, we can't use this method because it, it makes everything easy. <laughs> it's not like uh, the examiner's uh, job to make sure you use a way that makes everything difficult. No, as long as you use a correct method. And the DI method is exactly the same as using the integration by parts, except it's just, you know, laying out things in a very kind of uh, logical way. All right. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to use a DI method to solve this problem. Okay. So I have two products. I'm going to, one of them I'm going to take as something I have to differentiate. The other one is the thing I'm going to take that I have to integrate. Right. Now, what shall I differentiate? What should I integrate? When you've got exponential and trig, it really doesn't matter which one you do which for. You could do either way and it'll be fine. I'll give you the same answer in the end. But I like to make life easier. And I know if I differentiate uh, cosine, if I integrate cosine to uh, 2x, I'm going to deal with fractions because I have 
if I, if I integrate this, it's going to be sine 2x divided by 2, and then I'm going to deal with fractions. I don't want to deal with fractions if I can help it, so I'll, I like to deal with whole numbers, make life easier, right? So I'm going to take the cosine 2x, and I'll take that to differentiate, because I know when I differentiate this, I'll end up with, for example, first minus 2 sine 2x, and I'll take the integral as 3 e to the power of x. Now, when you integrate that, it's just going to stay the same. It won't change at all. So you'll notice in this case for di, you'll never get 0. It's going to continue on and on forever, and it will never get any simpler. You'll either have, uh, you know, cosine 2x times 3 e to the power of x, something like that, or and then you'll have sine of 2x or something, sine of 2x times 3 to the power of 2x. It will keep alternating between those. So what I have to try to look out for is something that is going to be looking like this. So I have 3e to the power of 2x, cosine 2x, dx. I have to look out for a line where I see these two on the same level, on the same level, because um, you know that's what you have to do when you're doing, uh, when you when you're integrating. Okay, you want to have the integral of this times that. Okay, that's how it's going to be like the you know u times v times uh, minus the integral of v times du. Okay, that's the um, integration by parts. So we kind of have to go revert back to integration by parts in the traditional me traditional method somewhat for this kind of com it's like a combination of the two if the differential doesn't go down to zero we're going to still have to deal with writing an integral down but what i'm going to be looking for in this case is something that looks exactly like this i have to look for a line that has something e to the power of x cosine 2x okay it has to have some something to do with that right so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to differentiate this so if I differentiate this, I'm going to get, now if I differentiate cosine of, of something, I get minus sine of the same thing multiplied by the differential what's inside the function. So, and I also have, uh, before I do that, I have plus, minus, plus, minus, you have to alternate these signs outside. So this is going to give me negative 2 sine 2x. This minus plus minus plus is just there for us to, you know, know how to deal with what to do with the, terms because remember it's it's this times this minus that times that for the you know the normal method integrating e to the power of th uh, 3 e to the power of x doesn't change okay this is the product 3 e to the power of x is going to stay as 3 e to the power of x some people say why didn't we integrate the 3 because it's part of this whole term it's not a separate term if it was 3 plus e to the power of x yes we integrate this and integrate this separately but here this is part of the same term we don't integrate them separately you integrate it as a whole term so this three e to the power of three sets of e to the power of three x. If you integrate them, it gives you three e to the power of, three sets of e to the power of three x. It doesn't change, and there's nothing to multiply or divide by because there's just a one x here. All right, now I don't see this. If I multiply these together, I don't see this. Okay, I don't see something like this. This is three e to the power of x times sine two x, and you've got another constant there, right? Something multiplying it. But I want to see cosine two x. Now, if I differentiate sine of two x, I get cosine of two x. So minus 2 sine 2x is going to be minus 4 cosine 2x. Why 4? Because this is going to be sine 2x becomes 2 sine 2 cosine 2x, then multiplied by minus 2. Again, this minus 2 is part of this whole term. I don't uh, in differentiate it separately. Okay, this makes sense. Only if it was minus 2 plus sine 2x, then I would differentiate that to become 0 equals plus between them. But because it's multiplied, it's one term. Now, integrating this, Again, I'll get 3e to the power of x. Now I see that this is what I'm looking for in terms of, oh, here. This is e to the power of 3, 3e to the power of 3x times cosine 2x. You're going to have that here. So I'm going to stop. All right, I don't need to go this far then. I can stop here. All right, that's where I'm going to stop now. And you'll see how this, this uh, type of integration works when you've got something which... Well, it looks like it will never break down. In fact, we can do a little trick here to make it break down. So we'll start off the same way. We're going to have this times this, and then this times this. Don't forget the sign here. So this is going to be cosine 2x times 3e to the power of x, which is, so, and, and I'm going to write this down as well. When you've got a question like this, you should always write down the beginning part because you'll see how it will help us to answer the question. When I, you have to write that down in this type of question where things don't break down at all. That's equal to, I multiply these together, so that's going to be 3e to the power of x times cosine of 2x. And then I'm going to do this times this. Now that's going to be, that will be plus, because you have a minus minus. Okay, because you have a minus minus this times that. So you're going to have plus 
e to the power of x times sine of 2x. And then I'm going to multiply these two together on the same level. So I'm going to have plus times minus is minus the integral of, and I'm going to, I'm going to write the 4 outside, because inside I want it to be 3 e to the power of x cosine 2x with respect to x. Why didn't I take this 3 out as well? Because I'm looking for this. This is what I'm looking for. All right, I'm looking for the 3 with it as well. All right, now I can see that these two things are like terms. This integral and this, they're like terms. Okay, so you can add them and subtract them. Um, and you can, you know, like if I have, if I, if I want to get rid of this now from this side, I can add 4 times the integral of 3e e to the power of x cosine 2x with respect to x to both sides of the equation. So this side, I have one set of 3e e to the power of x cosine 2x with respect to x. I have plus 4 integral of 3e e to the power of x cosine 2x with respect to x equals 3e e to the power of x cosine 2x plus 6 times e to the power of x sine 2x. And now when I add these together, what do I get? I get 5 times the integral of 3e e to the power of x cosine 2x, okay, uh, with respect to x equals 3e e to the power of x cosine of 2x plus 6e e to the power of x sine of 2x. And I've got one thing left to do is divide both sides by 5. And that will leave us with what we're looking for. We're looking for the answer to this. And if I divide by 5, I'm left with that. So I have the, what I'm looking for, 3e e to the power of x times the cosine of 2x with respect to x is equal to 3 fifths e to the power of x cosine 2x plus 6 over 5 e to the power of x sine 2x. And don't forget the plus c because it's an, in, it's an indefinite integral. And there is our answer to this question. All right. It's a lot less working and sh not working. It's a lot less messy in laying out your working than using the traditional integration by parts. Okay, layout. This is the same thing we're doing. There's absolutely no difference between what we've done and integration by parts. We are using integration by parts, but just setting it out in a more visually and, you know, friendly manner to make life easier for ourselves and also for the examiner I guess as well right so there's absolutely no difference between this and integration by parts you will get the same marks whether you use this or integration by parts don't be afraid of this I've showed you on the mark scheme even so a lot of students says I'm not going to use this because I'm not sure it's too easy it's it makes life too easy so the examiner might not give me the marks no they you know the, the examiner's job is not to try and make life difficult for you Right, that's not what their aim is. Their aim is to see that you understand how to deal with, you know, answering the questions properly. And what we've done here is exactly the same as what we would do with integration by parts. We've integrated all the terms here. We've differentiated the terms here. You know, we've recognized the same principles. Exactly. It's not like when you take your calculator and you solve a quadratic equation just by pressing some buttons or you're adding fractions together just by pressing some buttons without showing any steps and you just write the answers down. Yeah, without factorizing the quadratic or using the formula or completing the square, you just write the answers down. That's something where, yes, the examiner will take marks off because, you know, you're not being tested on how you can use the functions of your calculator. You're tested on something different, right? So here, what you're tested on is, you know, how to use integration by parts. And you are using integration by parts. You're just setting your work out in a way which is more efficient. That's all. But you're doing the same things. So don't be afraid. I've told you from the examiner's report as well, that as i mentioned here okay it says you may see different ways of presenting the application of parts e.g di method and that's perfectly fine okay they're not saying that you know don't give them the marks for this it's just saying look out you might see different ways of presenting it and that is absolutely fine okay so don't worry about um don't worry about having uh you know an issue with with uh, i'm not going to use this method because I want to be safe. It's, it's, it's perfectly safe to use this method. You'll get the marks for it. Okay, so there's the answer for 7 part 2 from this paper, October 2022, Pure Mathematics P4. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this section over here. Other questions to dealing with integration by parts will be found in this playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and the video that will appear in this section here will show you how to use my channel in an effective way. 
easy manner. Thank you for watching and see you soon.